The number beats a steady rhythm in Bree's mind as she leaves her office in the Fine Arts Building and walks outside onto the campus lawn. 25 days. 25 days. The students at the tiny college where she teaches take advantage of the unseasonably warm October afternoon, and she stares without really seeing them. Guys in track t-shirts toss a frisbee to one another, while a trio of girls in bikini tops lie on brightly colored beach towels, enjoying the sun. 25 days. Do they have any hope he'll tell investigators anything helpful before then? She wants to get home so she can read more news articles. It takes her a second to realize one of the boys playing frisbee is staring at her. It's her student, Zach, watching her with the intent expression he wears in her classroom after she asks a question about the use of light in a photograph or the balance between foreground and background. She makes a quick, almost involuntary gesture with her right hand, like she's shooing away a fly. Don't, she wills him. Someone will notice. His gaze moves from her to the frisbee cutting through the blue sky above him. Bree glances back at her phone's screen as she walks. It still shows the Associated Press article. She closes the tab so she doesn't have to look at the photo of John Allen Blue. That's one of the media's favorite pictures. Him on the stand at his trial. Eyes crinkling at the corners. Long-fingered hands gesturing languidly, like when she knew him. The letters from him sit in her desk drawer. He must have found her campus address online. Three letters in two years. White envelopes addressed in neat Palmer's script. In the bottom right corner, someone stamped in red, mailed from a state correctional institution. The familiar thoughts bubble up. If I had just listened, if I had just paid more attention. No, she tells herself, don't go there. 